Hi everyone, let's look at purchasing power parity theory and apply it to exchange rate theory. Economists tend to say that whatever the exchange rate is between two currencies, um, that should reflect purchasing power parity, meaning whatever a basket of goods and services costs in one country, when converted to another currency, you should be able to buy exactly the same level of goods and services in that foreign country. Let's take an example to understand. Let's take a UK basket of goods and services and a US basket of goods and services and let's say exactly the same goods and services are accounted for in the two baskets. Let's say in the UK the value of this basket came to £1,000 and in the US the value came to $1,600. Let's say the floating exchange rate between the two countries was £1 is equal to $1.60. Well, immediately you can see that that exchange rate reflects purchasing power parity. How do we know that? Because the basket of goods and services in the UK, which has a value of £1,000, when converted to US dollars, will actually be able to buy exactly the same level of goods and services in the US. Right? Let's look closely. £1,000 can buy us the UK basket of goods and services, which is equivalent to the US basket of goods and services. Right? When we convert that to US dollars, we get a value of $1,600, meaning that our pounds can actually buy exactly the same level of goods and services in the USA as they could in the UK. In which case, we have a perfectly balanced currency uh, exchange rate, we have an exchange rate which reflects purchasing power parity. Fine. And even vice versa, if we exchanged US dollars, $1,600 can buy this US basket of goods and services. If we converted that to pounds, then um, that dollar there, that uh, value of dollars, can actually buy exactly the same level of goods and services in the UK, in which case we have uh, purchasing power parity between the two currencies there. Uh, let's now say that the value of the US basket increased to $1,700. Maybe that was because of an increase in inflation. Right? Maybe that was because wages in the USA increased, which fed through to higher inflation which meant that the US basket actually rose in price. Let's now say that the floating exchange rate, the nominal exchange rate, stayed the same at £1 equals $1.60. All of a sudden now, this exchange rate does not reflect purchasing power parity. £1,000 worth of goods and services in the UK, when converted to US dollars, cannot buy exactly the same level of goods and services in the US. If we convert what we can buy in the UK for £1,000, we get to $1,600 in the US, but that can't buy, look, that can't buy the same level of goods and services in the US. We're going to be $100 short to buy the same level of goods and services in the US. We have a problem here. The pound is undervalued. The pound is not taking this as far in the US. The pound is not reflecting purchasing power parity according to this exchange rate. We have an issue. So according to this nominal exchange rate, which is here, so this is the nominal exchange rate, according to that, we can say, look, the pound is actually undervalued against the dollar. While the pound can buy a certain level of goods and services in the UK, when converted to dollars, it can't buy the same level of goods and services. It's undervalued. It can buy actually less than it can in the UK. That's not a good thing, okay? So the pound is undervalued against the dollar, and vice versa, the dollar is therefore overvalued against the pound. Right. Oh, against the pound, not against the dollar. Against the pound. Right. That's the problem with nominal exchange rates sometimes. They don't always reflect purchasing power. Therefore, economists would rather use the real exchange rate when it comes to measuring purchasing power. So let's look at the real exchange rate. The real exchange rate between the two currencies should be one pound is equal to one dollar seventy. And the real exchange rate is more useful for economists because it actually takes into account changes. So it takes into account changes in costs and prices. So the real exchange rate is how you can get a measure of purchasing power parity. The real exchange rate tells you what the purchasing power parity is between two currencies. And one pound equals one dollar seventy is the real exchange rate, is purchasing power parity according to our change in the US basket. So now if we exchange one thousand pounds in the UK 
into US dollars, we would able to buy, we'll be able to buy exactly the same level of goods and services in the US as we could buy in the UK for £1,000. Fantastic. All right. In theory, though, if nominal exchange rates are undervalued or overvalued, in theory, they should self-adjust. And in floating exchange rate systems, they should adjust to reflect purchasing power parity again. So at the moment, the pound is undervalued against the dollar. Right? The real exchange rate should be one pound equals one dollar seventy. According to economic theory, how will the pound exchange rate adjust to reflect the real exchange rate, to reflect purchasing power parity? Well, think about it. If the dollar is overvalued against the pound, the dollar can go further in the UK. In which case, US consumers might think, all right, maybe I should use my dollar to buy more UK goods and services. My pound, my dollar is overvalued. My pound is very, very strong relative to the pound. Overvalued against the pound, in which case, let's buy UK goods and services, which may be relatively cheaper. In which case, the supply, right, the supply of the dollar will actually increase as more dollars are sold to buy UK goods and services. And similarly, that will increase the demand for the pound, won't it? So if US uh, consumers or firms or whatever are buying more UK goods because their dollar can go further, yes, the supply of the dollar will increase, but also the demand for the pound will increase. And what that will do, it will lead to an appreciation of the pound. And it will mean that maybe the exchange rate now moves to one pound equals one dollar seventy, right? The dollar depreciates relative to the pound, the pound appreciates relative to the dollar, we get to one pound equals one dollar seventy, a basic appreciation of the pound, which now reflects purchasing power parity, reflects the real exchange rate. In theory, that's what should happen. In reality, though, unfortunately, that's not what happens. If the currency is undervalued or overvalued, we don't really see this self-adjustment very much. In theory, trade effects should change the demand and supply for given currencies and should take a currency back to purchasing power parity. But in reality, it's not trade effects that dominate the supply and demand for a currency, that dominate an exchange rate, the market for an exchange rate. It's speculative flows. It's speculation that actually leads to uh, the final exchange rate value for a given currency. So speculation can actually maintain an undervalued or an overvalued currency, if so. Um, that tends to be what determines the final exchange rate, not changes in, uh, in imports and exports and then demand supply for a currency. That doesn't really happen in the real world. So therefore, um, in the real world, economists tend to look at real exchange rates to get a proper idea of purchasing power parity of a currency. Um, in the real world, there is a great index called the Big Mac Index. And the Big Mac Index uh, tries to actually apply this purchasing power parity theory to the uh, to actual currencies to work out whether they're overvalued or undervalued. And what very simply happens is that a currency is, uh, is uh, exchanged and compared to the price of a Big Mac in the USA. So it's called the Big Mac Index and the economists have actually come up with it. It's a very clever idea. What they do is they look at the price of a Big Mac in the USA. So let's look at the price of a Big Mac in the USA which at the moment, and this is February 2015, it's uh, approximately, I think it's $4.74. That's what the price of Big Mac is in the USA. What they then do is they look at nominal exchange rates and they compare what the price of a Big Mac will be in other countries. So let's look at Switzerland. In Switzerland, when the Swiss franc is converted to US dollars, the price of a Big Mac is more like $7.54. So this is a very much, very much an overvalued Swiss franc, right? The Swiss franc can obviously go much further in the USA, and the US dollar, obviously here, cannot go very far in Switzerland, right? So the Swiss franc, therefore, is overvalued. Whereas if we look at China, uh, if we convert the Chinese yuan to US dollars, and therefore the price of a Big Mac, in China, the price of a Big Mac is only two pounds, uh, two dollars, I think it's two dollars, two dollars forty-four. I think it is, which implies that the U.S. dollar can go much, much further in China, um, which means that the Chinese currency is currently undervalued. Okay, so if a, if a U.S. Uh, consumer decides to go to China and convert their currency into yuan, they'll be able to buy far more Big Macs. Um, so the Chinese currency, therefore, is undervalued. The Swiss franc is overvalued. In theory, there will be pressure on the Chinese currency to appreciate to get back to purchasing power parity, to reflect $4.74 in terms of, of a Big Mac. 
and the Swiss franc should actually depreciate, depreciate in value. So basically, the big Mac index is instead of looking at a whole basket of goods and services, looking at the difference in prices, is just taking the big Mac as the basket basically and looking at the difference in prices uh, when you convert currencies. And if the actual values are not the same, then we don't have purchasing power parity. And if the value of, of a currency in one country is more than what the Big Mac price is in, uh, in the USA, you have an overvalued currency. So this is a very good way of looking at whether currencies are reflecting purchasing power or not. Um, okay, so that's purchasing power parity theory for you. Hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching. See you next time.